hello students today we start with the new chapter that is spring jointed trusses this chapter will be covered in two parts so in the first part we'll cover the basic uh, theoretical concepts of the chapter and uh, five six problems in this uh, uh, lecture then another five seven pro five six problems will be, will be covered in the second part of this uh, chapter now uh, I have, before we start the lecture i need to mention that problems in this chapter are lengthy so uh, in uh, slides uh, font size is small so as to accommodate uh, more matter on the single slide so it is advisable uh, it is advised that you watch this lecture on laptop uh, in place of uh, watching it on mobile all right let's start with the it what is a truss truss is assemblage of thin or slender members connected together at their ends by riveting or welding so that at they act as the hinges members of the trusses are straight and our loads are applied only at the joints as you can see that loads are applied at the, at the joints so that each and every member of the truss is a two force member two force member means uh, due to application the loads at the joints of the trusses uh, various members of the trusses are subjected to only axial loads then what is the frame frame is also assemblage of thin members which are connected together at the ends by means of riveting and welding so that they act as hinges but in case of the frame the loads are applied not only at the joints but in between also as you can see that so due to application the load in between each and every member of the truss will not be a two force member few members may be two force member but certain members may be subjected to uh, bending moment also certain members may be subjected to bending moment in addition to axial forces right it is uh, due to the reason loads are applied in between also so the uh, frame is a broad term so every truss can be called as a frame but frame cannot be called as a truss i have written as a note every truss is a frame but frame can never be called as a truss so we can say in short the truss is type of a frame where the loads are applied at the joints so that each and every member of the truss will be subjected to only axial forces as uh, in this chapter we will be covering only truss frame is not part of the syllabus uh, uh, for us now this chapter can be considered as continuation of equilibrium of coplanar forces or i can also call this chapter as uh, application of coplanar forces uh, in our subject now we will understand where we come now we start with the uses of the trusses where the trusses are used you all must have traveled by the local trains or the trains right that uh, truss of the railway platform is uh, one of the important uh, component of the truss uh, the tr uh, roof is truss you can see that so these trusses are used uh, to support the load of the roof at the railway platforms as shown in the figure you must have seen that at railway platform there is a column in the middle of the platform and then there is a truss which is uh, supported on these columns and then uh, these trusses are cross connected by certain members and from the top it is covered with the ac or gi sheet so this way the roof of the platform is created so in this major load bearing member is a truss second use is that in the bridge railway bridges trusses are used to support the load from the floor of the bridge as shown in the figure you can see that this is a truss and this is the floor level of the bridge from here the load is transmitted to the truss now we will be analyzing the trusses so what are the assumptions we'll have in the analysis of pin jointed uh, trusses joints are assumed to be pin connected as we have already discussed that all joints are considered to be pin jointed all right uh, using riveting or back so joints cannot resist movements loads are applied only at the joints you can see that loads are applied only at the joints members of the truss are straight two force members that means due to application by external loads at the joints members are subjected to only axial forces axial forces along the axis of the member collinear with the center line of the members weight of the members are very small so they are neglected in the analysis right if we consider the weight of the members it turns out to be a frame which is not part of our syllabus so you will not be given weight of the members at all in the uh, chapter truss is statically determined what does it mean this is again important assumption we are determined means which can be solved statically using concepts of statics 
the trust can be determined can it is determined it can be solved that is the thing so uh, uh, what is the condition for it uh, to be determined or what is condition for it to perfect that is that what is we are going to do condition of perfect trust it is one of the assumption that we consider that the given trust has to be perfect and determined two types of the trusts we come across as per our slippers type 1 trust is trust supported on one hand and one hand this is we uh, this trust is also called as simply supported trust type 2 trust will be trust supported on two hinges that is called as cantilever trust that we'll discuss in the next slide now you can see that this is a trust which is supported on one hinge and one hand these all dots at the joints are indicating that all joints are pin joint loads are applied w1 w2 at the joints so in this truss let's count number of members this is one member 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so number of members m is equal to number of members in the truss is 9 joints 1 2 3 4 5 6 so and how many react external reactions will be there hinge exerts two reactions roller exerts a number of reactions so if m is equal to 2j minus 3 this is a geometrical condition if this geometrical condition is satisfying m is equal to 2j minus 3 m is equal to 2j then given truss is perfect rigid stable and determinate that means it is part of our slippers as per our slippers you will be coming across only the trusses which are perfect and determinate all right now in the second example i have removed this member If I remove this member, so number of members left out will be eight. One, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight. Number of joints is still six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So M is less than two J minus three. M is eight, but two J minus three is going to be uh, nine. So M is less than two J minus three means the given truss is deficient, under rigid, under stiff, unstable. So that means it will not exist. It will collapse when it is put to use. Now in the next truss. Same truss. Now I have added one more member. Where this way I have added. This diagonal member is added up. So number of members in this truss will become ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. This is not a joint. This is not a joint. So number of members is ten. Number of joints is six only. One, two, three, four, five, six. So two j minus m is greater than two j. M is ten, and two uh, j minus three is nine. So m is greater than two j minus three. So such a truss is called as over rigid, over stiff, indeterminate, redundant. So this truss is not part of your slippers. This truss is over rigid, over stiff, more than what is needed ideally. So this truss we learn uh, at higher level, and that is only for civil engineering branch. For other branch people will not study this truss. This is not part of our first year engineering slippers. So for first year engineering slippers, if the truss is supported on one hinge, one dollar, this kind of trusses we will be coming up. Now we come across the truss which is supported on two, two hinges. Second type of the truss, truss supported on two hinges, which we call it as cantilever truss. So you can see that this is a truss which is supported on two hinges. We call this truss as cantilever truss also. How many members are in, uh, there in this truss? One, two, three, four, five, six. How many joints are there? One, two, three, four, and five. How many members? Five. So here, condition of perfect truss is m is equal to 2j minus 4. 4 is number of reactions. Since there are two hinges, so four reactions will be exerted. So a condition of uh, perfect truss uh, is m is equal to 2j minus 4 in this type, right? In the the, the given truss is perfect truss because condition of perfect truss uh, m is equal to 2j minus 4 is satisfying in this case. We will be analyzing both the types of the truss. in the first part of my lecture that is in uh, today's lecture we will be covering the five problems of type 1 trusses that is trusses supported on one hinge and one roller in my next lecture i'll be covering few problems of type 1 and uh, you know, certain uh, few problems from type 2 also now let's understand in deep what is method of joints method of joints this method is as its name is method joints it is adopted to determine forces in all the members of the truss now what are the 
steps what we follow. First, we draw the given truss. We find the support reactions. If the truss is supported on one hinge, one hinge and one roller, we find the support reaction. But if the truss is supported on two hinges, as in this diagram, then there is no need to find the support reactions. Uh, you can find the forces all members without finding reactions. Now we consider free body diagram of a joint where number of unknown forces is not more than two. So right, because this method is based on concurrent force system. As FBD of a joint will always be example of concurrent force system. So two equilibrium conditions, sigma Fx equal to zero and sigma Fy is equal to zero will be available. So we look for a joint where number of unknown is not more than two. Apply sigma Fx and sigma Fy is equal to zero to find those unknowns. Then we proceed to the next joint where again uh, number of unknown is not more than two. Again apply sigma Fx equal to zero and sigma Fy is equal to zero. Continue this process till we reach the last joint. At the last joint, equilibrium conditions sigma Fx and sigma Fy is equal to zero may be verified or may be checked. So this is the basic methodology of method of joints. This is, uh, the, you have two methods as far as reverse, method of joints and method of sections. Now we'll understand uh, about the method of sections. This method is adopted when you want to find forces in only few members of the truss directly, or you want to verify the forces in certain members of the truss, uh, which you have already obtained by method of joints. As method of joints was based on concurrent force system in equilibrium, so only two equilibrium conditions were available. Whereas method of sections, uh, three body diagram, what uh, we consider it for the part of the truss, it's mostly example of general force system. If it is example of general force system, three equilibrium conditions will be available. Three. Sigma Fx is equal to zero, sigma Fy is equal to zero, and sigma M is equal to zero. Since movement equilibrium condition is also used in this method, this method is also called as method of movements. Now, what is what are the steps involved? We pass a section on the truss in such a way that three members are cut. Those three members should uh, include unknown members because whatever members are cut, force in those members will become unknown. Then, in exceptionally, we take a section cutting four members. If you are taking a section cutting uh, three members, we are sure to get all three unknowns. But if you are taking a section cutting uh, four members, we are sure that we cannot get all because we have only three equilibrium conditions in general force system. Then we consider FBD of part of the truss. FBD of the part of the truss, when we consider it, right, left side, right side, above, uh, one side part we consider it, other side part we completely close. Only the members which are cut, forces in those members will become unknown. Then we apply the equilibrium condition sigma fx is equal to zero, sigma fy is equal to zero, and sigma m, m is equal to zero on the FBD of the part of the truss to find the three unknowns. All right. Now, certain things which you need to follow in the entire chapter in both the methods, whether method of joints or method of section. Initially, all the four forces in all the unknown members are assumed to be tensile. So, after you have applied the equilibrium condition, whether in method of joints or method of section, if unknown uh, force in the member comes out to be positive, it is tensile, and if it comes out to be negative, it is compressive. Now, how do you understand tensile means away from the joint? All right, compressive means towards the joint. Now, for trusses supported on two hinges, method of joints and method of sections can be applied without finding support reactions. However, the reactions can be determined at the ends by applying uh, uh, by considering the free body diagram of joints. We are ready to start with the problems. Once again, I request you all to watch this video on laptop, laptops uh, rather than on mobile. Reason for that is problems in this chapter are very, very lengthy and I have to uh, put the entire solution as far as possible only in one slide. So font size is small. So you can have a good uh, viewing and uh, you can watch it properly if you watch the video on the laptop. So it is my sincere advice to you all to watch this video on the laptop once again as I'm starting now with the problem. So we start with type one truss problems on type one truss is supported on one hinge and one door. My first problem: using method of joint, find the forces in the truss members. All the members of the truss, you need to find the actual forces. This is a truss which is supported on one hinge and one door. As we discussed, first we find the we draw the free body diagram of the truss. 
on the free body diagram of the truss we draw it it is as it is what you have shown it these are the as it is you draw it only you will mark two reactions at the hinge one horizontal one vertical and another is at the roller side so this is ha we assume this is va and this is now you will apply equilibrium conditions on the truss so on the truss you will have only external loads and you will have only the support reactions so assume that is your fbd of the truss this 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 action forces on the trusses are not part of fbd of the truss again i repeat that Actual forces like this is marked 5.5 kilo and 1.25, 4.5 kilo. These are not part of FBD of the truss. So FBD of the truss is this truss along with support reactions. So we apply equilibrium conditions on the FBD of entire truss. Sigma F X is equal to zero gives me H A zero because there is no other horizontal. Sigma F Y is equal to zero gives me V A on the FBD of the truss. Upward forces V A and V B. Downward is six plus nine. So that is what is fifteen. Then. To find the the reactions, we apply third uh, equilibrium condition. Sigma m is equal to zero. When I take sigma m is equal to zero, H A V A will go off. Six into two clockwise, nine into six clockwise, V B into eight anti clockwise. So you get the value of V B. V B comes out to be eight point two five kilometer. We have shown it on the test. Hence, from equation number one, you get the value of V A as a six point seven five kilo. So this way. We have got the support reaction. We had drawn the FBD of the truss. We have marked the uh, reactions with the correct directions on the truss. Now we should find the angle of uh, made by the inclined members on the truss before we start applying method of joints. Like we will find this uh, in this this angle is theta. So what is going to be tan theta in this right angle triangle? Opposite side that is three upon tan theta is three by two. You get theta. This is theta. So this is also theta. Now what about this part? We we'll take this angle as alpha. So what will be tan alpha in this right angle triangle? Tan alpha is going to be opposite side is three upon four. Tan theta tan alpha is three by four. So alpha is thirty six point eight centimeters. So this way we have got inclination of the uh, members which are inclined. Now, right now your truss is ready to apply method of joints. So now we consider uh, FBD of joint A. At FBD of joint A, H A B are known. What are the actual forces in member AC and actual forces in member AR? Known. So two unknowns are there. We could have started from joint B also. At joint B also, you will have two unknowns: actual forces in member BD and BH. So we have to start from one joint. I can start from FBD of joint A, or I can start from FBD of joint B. We are solving this problem by method of joints. At forces in all the members of the truss are required. Whenever they ask you to find the forces in all members of the truss state, you have to move to uh, solve the problem by method of joints. Now we take FBD of joint A. On FBD of joint A, H A is zero. I have not shown it. V A is six point seven five. I don't need to write V A directly. We can show the reaction six point seven five is up. Force in member A is, and force in member A C. Both are assumed to be tensile. Tensile means what? Away from joint. So we will always assume unknown uh, force in uh, members, where as tensile only. We'll assume actual force in unknown members will be assumed to be tensile. Tensile means what? Away from the joint. Now. You can apply the equilibrium condition sigma F X equal to zero or sigma F Y equal to zero. Whatever uh, is uh, convenient to us, we apply that. Like in this case, I am writing sigma F Y equal to zero first, because if I write sigma F X equal to zero, I will get relation between unknowns. But if I write sigma F Y equal to zero, F A C sine theta is upward plus six point seven five equals zero. So upward forces are equated to downwards. If you put the value of uh, sine theta into it, F A C will be upward. All right. That is minus eight point one one. That means it is compression. Now sigma F X equal to zero. If it is minus, we will not change the sign on the F B D of the joint. Now we will write equilibrium condition sigma F X equal to zero. What is sigma F X? F A plus F A C cos theta equals zero. Right? F A C is obtained as minus eight point one one. Substitute that. Cos theta value cos uh, theta value substitute. If you solve it, it comes out to be four point five four. This way, students, we have solved a joint. It is based on concurrent force system in equilibrium. We got F A as uh, 4.5 tensile. F A C was obtained minus 8.11. That means it is compression. Now, before proceeding to the next joint, the values should be marked on the truss. अभी कैसे mark करेंगे truss के ऊपर देखो. F A C is 8.11 compression. So the value magnitude of the force is written near the middle of the member, and it is compression means towards the joint. So ये यहाँ पे भी दिखाएंगे towards the joint. यहाँ पे दिखाएंगे. So arrows. Showing tension or compression are marked near the joint. Value 
of uh, magnitude of the force is written near the center. 4.5 kilometer distance tensile, so arrow will be away from joint, away from joint, and uh, 4.5 kilometer is magnitude written near the pit. So these two members are now known, right? Next joint. Now, what is the advantage of marking it in the truss? You come to know which is the next uh, joint to be considered. So now you can understand that next joint, I can take joint E. At joint E, uh, you can see that two unknowns are left out. Either two unknowns, C and EF. So now we draw the free body diagram of it. Joint E. When you draw free body diagram of the joint E, on this side is 4.5 millimeter. This 4.5 millimeter is nothing but force in member A. I don't need to write it FA is equal to 4.5. We just write 4.5 millimeter. This 6 kiloton is external load. We have shown it as it is. Then uh, force in member EF, we have taken in tension. Force in member C, we have taken FC in tension. Apply sigma FX is equal to 0. FEF is equal to 4.5 kiloton. That is tensile, tensile product. Sigma FY is equal to 0. FC is equal to 6 kiloton. That is also positive. That means tensile. Now, you should mark the value. You can see that FC is 6 kiloton tension. So away from joint, away from joint. Magnitude is written near the middle. For member EF, it is tensile 4.5 kiloton. Write the value near the middle, away from joint, away from joint. Arrows showing tension or compression should be marked near the joints. Next, we, uh, now in the bracket you are seeing, we are writing C or T. C stands for compression, T stands for tension. All the known members are initially assumed in tension, right? If they come out to be positive, that means tensile after solving. And if they come out to be negative, that means they are compressive. Next joint, what I can take is joint C. Again, font size has been further reduced so that we can cover it in one slide only the entire solution. Joint C. Now, at joint C, you can see that this is force in member AC is already known. Force in member C is already known. Unknowns are CD and CF. Right? You can see that this is FCD. This is FCF. This is making angle alpha. This is 6 kiloton tension is away. This is 8.11 kiloton compression. That means arrows towards the joint. This angle is theta. This angle is alpha. Now, you can see that two unknowns are there. You are sure to solve. You should start with sigma Fy is equal to 0. Right? That will get me Fc. F. Sigma Fy is equal to 0. Fcf sin alpha down plus 6 is equal to 8.11 sin theta. Substitute the value of alpha and theta. You will get the Fcf as 1.25 km. Then we write sigma Fx is equal to 0. Fcd plus Fcf cos alpha plus 8.11 cos theta. Substitute the value of theta, alpha, and also the value of FC, that is 1.25 kilometer tensile. If you solve it all this, FCD value comes out to be minus 5.5 or 5.5 kiloton compression. Now this result should be marked. CD comes out to be 5.5 kiloton compression. So we have marked it towards the joint, towards the joint, since compression value is written near the center. Here this is 1.25 kiloton tension away, away. All right. Now joint D. At joint D, force in member CD is known. So unknowns are what? DF and DB or BD. Now 5.5 kN tension CD, force in member CD is marked on the FD. This is FBD and this is FDF. Uh, right. Sigma FX is equal to 0. FBD cos theta plus 5.5 is 0. FBD is minus 9.915 or 9.915 kiloton compression. Sigma Fy is equal to 0. FDF plus FDD sin theta equals 0. Substitute the value of FDD what you got it minus. Since we don't change the direction, so if you uh, force in one member comes out to be negative, on other equilibrium condition it is substituted negative. So if you substitute FDF comes out to be 8.25 kiloton tensile. So we have marked it 8.25 kiloton tension and force in member DF. You can see that arrow is away from joint, away from joint. Value is written in near the center. For member BD, it is compression, it is compression, that is 9.915. Then we come out to, we are left out with only one member, that is DF. For that, we can take FBD of joint F or you can take FBD of joint D also. Here we have taken FBD of joint F. So here 9 kiloton external, F, DF, X, uh, unknown force. This is 8.25, this is 1.25 tensile, both are tensile, and this is 4.5 tensile. So only one unknown is there. We write sigma Fx is equal to 0. F, DF, 
is equal to 4.5 plus 1.25 cos alpha. Substitute the value of alpha, you will get the value of FBF as 5.5 kilonewton tension. So we have marked it 5.5 kilonewton tension and this is value is written here. This way the problem gets over. You have found the forces in all the members of the truss by method of joints. But still we have not used sigma uh, Fy is equal to zero at joint depth. So if you want to check it, check has no marks, right? So check is sigma Fy is equal to uh, is equal to sigma Fy. Now you have to solve it as you are solving the problem of resultant of concurrent forces. So sigma Fy taking upwards positive. So what is that? 8.25 plus minus 9 plus 1.25 sin alpha. Substitute the value of alpha, you'll find that it comes out to be zero. Similarly, if you consider FBD of joint B, and if you find uh, FBD of joint B, where you'll be showing 8.25 kiloton up and 9.915 compression and 5.5 tension, this FBD is drawn as it is. And if you find sigma fx, it will come out to be zero. Sigma fi comes out to be zero. So this way you can say that uh, equilibrium conditions, sigma fx and sigma fi is equal to zero have been verified at joint B. But keep it in mind, checking or extra uh, equilibrium condition, which uh, if you have already found the force in all members of the truss by method of joints, that means at this stage, you can stop the solution in the examination. You don't need to do any check working. This check working will not have any credit or marks in the examination. So this way, students, we have understood how to solve the truss, which is supported on one hinge and, one uh, and another end on roller, okay, by method of joints. Now, next problems, few problems we'll take up where we'll learn method of joints as well as method of sections. Now, next problem which I'm taking up, second sum. This is a truss which is given to you. You need to, for this given truss, it is supported on one hinge and one roller. It is hinged at A, roller supported at A. All right. For the given truss, you need to find the reactions. You need to find forces in all the members of by method of joints. Find the forces in few members, CF, CB, and DB by method of sections. So first, students will consider FBD of the truss. When I draw FBD of the truss, actual forces in all members, what you are seeing uh, on this R, assume that they are not there in the beginning. You have only this truss with external loads and two reactions at hint A. You assume B upward and H to the left. Here VB is assumed to be upward. Now we apply equilibrium conditions on the FBD of the truss. This is the example of general force system. You need to find the support reaction. As the truss is supported on one hinge and one roller, there will be three unknowns and three equilibrium conditions will be there. So if you write sigma Fx is equal to zero. Sigma Fx is equal to zero. Which that's you. HA is equal to 4.5 plus 9.4.5. That is HA comes out to be 18 kilometer towards the then sigma Fy is equal to 0 when we write it. VA plus VB is equal to 0. Slight misprinting is there. VA is also come, will come there. VA plus VB is 0. That is equation number 1. Slight misprinting has happened here. I hope you understand. On the abridor trust, VA plus VB is equal to 0. Now, we take moment about A. Sigma MA is equal to 0. What goes off HA, VA and this 4.5? So, VB into 3 is anti-clockwise. 9 into 3, about A will give clockwise, 4.5 to 6 will give clockwise. So clockwise moment is taken on left side, anti-clockwise on right side. So you get value of VB as 18 kN upward. Then 18 kN value of VB, if you substitute in this equation number 1, VA plus VB is 0, VLV of VA comes out to be minus 18 or 18 kN upward. Now we start solving this problem by method of joints. To solve it by method of joints, I can start from joint A. Because there are two unknown uh, unknowns are there at joint A. Even you can start from joint E also, because joint E is having also two unknowns, right? Anyway, we have to start from joint A or joint E. We are starting from joint A. Now, as the there are two inclined members, both the inclined members are making 45 degrees with the uh, joint A. For joint A, when I draw for free body diagram, 4.5 kN is external force, 18 kN is reaction towards left, so net is 13.5 kN towards left. This is FAC, this is FAB, and this is 18 kN. We write sigma Fx is equal to 0 on this joint. FAB is equal to 13.5 kN tensile. Sigma Fy is equal to 0. FAC is 18 kN tensile. So we mark it. This is 18 kN tension. Arrows 
away from joint, away from joint, and value is written near the bit. Here 13.5 tensile arrow away from joint, away from. Joint. Then we take joint B. At joint B, two unknowns are left out now. After we have found force in member AB, unknowns are BD and BC. So after solving any joint, result should always be marked on the truss. Result should always be marked on the truss. Now, see in certain books, certain authors, they advise you to write it at the end in the form of table. That is okay. But if you mark it on the truss, it helps you in selecting the next joint. It helps you in selecting the next joint. Now, next we take joint B. At joint B, this 18 kilonewton is the reaction BB. 13.5 kilonewton is uh, the actual force in member AB. Unknowns are BC and BD. So FBD and FBC both are taken as tensile. We write sigma FX equal to zero since BC will be obtained. If I take sigma FI, I'll get relation between two unknowns. Sigma FX equal to zero. FBC cross 45 plus 13.5 is equal. So FBC is minus 19.1. Or 19.09, so that means 19.09 kilonewton. Sigma Fy is equal to zero. Fbd plus Fbc sine 45 is 18. Substitute the value of Fbc into it. Fbd will be obtained. Right? Fbc is negative, so you will be substituting negative only because we do not change the direction of uh, unknown forces on the Fbd of joint. So that Fbd comes out to be minus 4.5. That means 4.5 kilonewton. So we have got FBD as 4.5 kiloton compression, FBC as 19.09 kiloton compression. So we should write the results on the truss. I have written in 19.09 kiloton compression towards joint towards joint. Here BD is 4.5 kiloton compression towards the joint towards joint 4.5 kiloton. Next joint, what we take it is joint D. At joint D, now there are two unknowns, CD and DF. That's why we have selected this joint. Can I select joint C? No, because three unknowns are still there on the right now. So we take next joint. So this is the way in which we select the joint. Next joint, what you selected should not have more than two unknowns. Otherwise, you will be stuck. So at joint D, this is FCD and FDF. This is 4.5 kiloton is a friction force in member. Sigma FX is equal to zero gives you FCD is zero. Sigma FY is FDF plus 4.5 is zero. FDF is minus 4.5 or 4.5 kiloton compression. See, this member FCD is zero. How do you mark zero force member? Here, near the, there is no magnitude, there is no arrow for this uh, member. So you need to simply write zero near the middle. All right. Then we come to joint F. Joint F has two unknowns, EF and CF. FEF and FCF have been taken unknown. We have taken them in tension, away from joint, away from joint, this angle is 45. 4.5 kilonewton is actual force in member DF. Now, sigma FY is equal to zero. FCF sine 45 is equal to 4.5. So FCF is 6.364 kiloton tension. Sigma FX is equal to 0. FEF plus FCF cross 45 is 0. FEF, FCF value substituted. FEF comes out to minus 4.5 or that is 4.5 kiloton compression. So we mark it here 4.5 kiloton compression. We mark it uh, actual force in this member as 6.364 kiloton compression. Now you are left out with only one uh, member that is C. Now we take FBD of joint E. This 4.5 kiloton is known. Actual force in member EF. This 4.5 kiloton is external load. Unknown member is FC. Sigma FY is equal to zero gives you FC as zero. Is that clear to everybody? Now at this joint, sigma FX is orally satisfying or not? Sigma FX 4.5 to the left, 4.5 to the right. So this is sigma FX is equal to zero is satisfying. No need to check, no need to state that. But similarly, you are still left out with joint C. If you draw FBD of joint C, Equilibrium condition sigma fx is equal to zero and sigma fi is equal to zero may be verified at joint C. All right. I have written here a note sigma fx and sigma fi may be applied in any sequence on every joint. That is already we have discussed. Somewhere we start with sigma fi, somewhere it starts from sigma fx is equal to zero. It is as per our convenience, whichever gives you result faster, we start with that equilibrium condition. Now, students, same problem. Now we need to solve it by method of section. What are, what are the unknowns asked in this method section? Force in members CF, CB, and DP. Right? If you want to solve a problem by method of sections, you need to first find support reactions. Support reactions you have found for this truss by method of joints already. So now in the next slide, I'll be showing you a video of the truss along with external loads and reactions with the correct time. Now you can see this. 
I thought the section needs FBD of entire truss. Can you see that? This is the entire truss we have shown. External loads have been shown. Reactions have been shown. Reaction V is 18 down. VP is 18 kiloton up. HA is 18 kiloton towards that. So we have not shown any actual forces uh, by method of joints. We have simply kept the FBD of truss in. To find the force in member CF or uh, to find the force in member BC and BD. To find the force in member BC and BD, pass the section 1. You can see that the section has been passed in such a way that out of three unknowns, two unknowns are covered on this section. That means those two unknowns can be determined. Suppose he had asked force in member AC also. So only one section was required to find force in all members of the class. How many sections are required to find a uh, uh, few members uh, by method of section? It is all geometric. Right? In this case, he asked force in member BC, BD, and CF. So I cannot cover them on one section because I have to see that truss should be divided in two parts. Not more than three members should be cut. Otherwise, it will be difficult for me to solve the problem by method of sections. If three members are cut, we are 100% sure to get force in all three members. Whether we need all three or we need uh, one or two. Now, so we pass the section one one. We pass the section one one on the truss so that member AC, BC and BD are cut. So force in these three members can be now we consider FBD of the part of the truss below section 1. You can see that 18 down, 18 these are the reactions, external load, reaction. Now FAC, FBC and FBD are the three members are cut. Force in these three members will become unknown. All the three members have been taken in tension. Right? Students, we do not take any uh, member force on the other side of the joints. If I'm taking FBD of the part of the truss below section 1, 1, I'll not take any force or member or reaction on the other side. But uh, movement center can be there on the other side also. Because movement center can be, we are solving uh, the problem of coplanar force system. So movement center can be anywhere in the plane. So we have taken all three unknowns in tension away, away, away from joint. We are writing sigma fx equal to zero. Now, FBD of this stress is example of general force system. The three claim conditions can be used. Sigma fx equal to zero. FBC cos 45 plus 18 is equal to 4.5. So, FBC comes out to be 19 from minus 19.09. That is 19.09 kiloton compression. So, one unknown has been obtained. Now, you need to, you, are, you want to find which one? You have found FBC. You want to find FBD. So, you can take either movement about A or you can take movement about C. If you take movement about C, FAC and FBC will go off directly, FBD will be obtained. Whereas if you take movement about A, FAC will go off, FBC and FBD will give you movement. So you'll have to substitute the value of FBC. So it is better that we take movement about C so that directly FBD value will be obtained. So sigma MC, keep your pen or pencil at C and you will see that FAC and FBC will go off. Now we'll take movement all forces about it. Now you can see that. First, on the left hand side, I have written anti clockwise moment FBD. This FBD into 3 anti clockwise. This 18 into 3, that is also anti clockwise. All right. This 4.5 into 3 will also give anti clockwise about C. 18 into 3 will give clockwise. So that is written on the right side. So I have written anti clockwise moments on left side and clockwise moments on right side. So FBD is minus 4.5 or 4.5 kilometer. I have written a note what I have already spoken. Moment center can be taken on the other side of the section. As I told you that uh, moment center can be taken anywhere in the plane. Now to find the force in member CF, to find the force in member CF, we can conveniently take a section horizontal like this, cutting through member C, CF and D. This time it is convenient that we take part of the section above, uh, uh, part of the truss above the section D. You know why? We always take, like in this case of section 1, 1, we took the part of the truss below section 1, 1 because that was small. Here, in this case, we took part of the truss above the section uh, 2, 2, since that is smaller part. So for uh, section 2, 2, we took FBD, the part of the truss above section 2, 2. So now you can see that this member is not cut, force in this member will not become unknown. C is cut, force in that member is unknown. CF is unknown, since member is cut. DF is uh, cut, this is true. So this is section 2. So we can write here sigma fx equal to 0. Sigma fx equal to 0 is fcf cos 45 is 4.5. fcf is 6.364 kilometer tensile. All right. We do not want, uh, he is not asking for, 
us to find the force in member C and DF. So we have not found. If it was us, we could have applied the other equilibrium conditions of general forces term to find the other unknowns on the FDB of the mass. So this way, students, method of section is applied. As I mentioned, the font size is small, so advise to watch this video on laptop. Again, you can see that in this problem also, the font size has been kept small for the obvious reason that we want to cover the maximum solution of the problem uh, in single slide only. Because, because again and again, I have to explain uh, uh, the sum to the FDD of the task part. We are ready to start with third sum. Next slide. The pin jointed truss is loaded and supported as shown. Determine number one the forces in members BD, CD, and CE by method of section. So three members he is asking the forces in uh, actually forces in three members by method of sections and forces in remaining members by method of. So first we draw FBD of the truss to find the support reactions. This truss has been drawn. All right. Action force in various members, what you are seeing is uh, not part of FBD of the truss. You show the external load 1200, 600, 400, 200. Then reactions at A, HA and BA. Reaction at F, EF. All right. Now, here. Apart from finding reactions, you also need to find the inclination of the members. This angle is 45. I take this angle theta. So in triangle C, B, E, in triangle C, D, E, what will be 10 theta? 5 plus 15, 20 upon 50. Opposite upon this. to get theta. Then we are finding alpha. This angle is alpha in triangle B, D, B dash. 10 alpha will be B, B dash, that is 5 upon 50. That will get then on this side, 10 beta is opposite upon base. That is 20 upon 10. That gets beta. So this way, uh, three angles, theta, alpha, beta are applied. Now we apply equilibrium conditions. Sigma fx equal to 0 gives HA is 0. Sigma fx equal to 0 gives you HA as 0. Correct? Then we come to sigma fy is equal to 0. Sigma fy is VA plus VF is upward. All right, equal to 1200 plus 600 plus 400 plus 200 down. So VA plus VF is equal to 2400. Then take sigma MA is equal to 0 on FDD of the truss. 1200 into 15 clockwise, 400 into 15 clockwise, 600 into 30 clockwise, 200 into 30 clockwise, and VF into 40 anticlockwise. You get the value of that is 1200. All right. Once you get VF, then value of VA is obtained by substituting the value of VF in the question number. So this is VA. We found VA and VF both are uh, obtained as 1200. So this way the reaction part is complete. After finding the reactions, we have to find forces in three members by method of section. Which are those members? BD, CD, and C. This is BD, CD, and C. Well, we can uh, cover all the three members in one section. So I pass a section 1-1. One, one. Section should pass through only members. It should never pass through uh, joints. Right? Otherwise, how do you split the trust? So three members, whichever are unknown by method section, we have taken a section cutting three members. Shape of the section does not matter. Section can be vertical, section can be inclined, does not matter. So we pass the section one one, and we'll consider FBD of the part of the truss on the left hand side of the section. I repeat again, we pass the section one one to find the force in member BD, CD, and C by method of section. Consider FBD the part on the left uh, part of the truss on the left side of the section. We have drawn the FBD, the part of the truss. We have shown VA, reaction, external loads are shown. This is FBD, away from B. F, C, D, away from C. F, C, away from C. All three unknowns, FBD, F, C, D, and F, C are shown away from joints. We are considering part of this truss on the left-hand side of section, but movement center can be uh, taken on the other side. So we extended uh, the... Uh, extended member BD and CD so that it uh, you mark joint D. Now here, we take first movement about joint D. On this FBD of this truss, three unknowns are there. FBD, FCD, and FCD. 
This is example of general force system. All three unknowns can be determined. If I take moment center D, FBD and FCD will go off. All right. Then we take uh, anti-clockwise moment on left side. FC into 20 anti-clockwise. 1200 into 15 anti-clockwise. 400 into 15 anti-clockwise. And 1200 into 30 clockwise. So this is that is FCS 600 cancer. When you take movement about C, when you take movement about C, FCD and FCE will go off. Uh, you will find FBD. So sigma MC is equal to 0, FBD cos alpha into 15. Right? FBD sin alpha will give 0 moment, 1200 will give 0 moment since passing through C, 400 will uh, give 0 moment. So FBD cos alpha into 15 plus 1200 into 15. 15, 15 gets cancelled in this and substitute the value of alpha, you get FBD as minus 1264.8. So 1264.8 kilometer, sorry, Newton compression. Then you write sigma fx equal to 0. When you take sigma fx is equal to 0 on this fc plus fcd cos theta plus fbd cos alpha equals 0. Substitute the value of fc 600 and uh, fbd minus 1264.8. Also substitute the value of theta and alpha. You get fcd as 1000 newton cancel. All right. Now, he is asking you to find the forces in remaining members by method of sections, method of joints. So, forces, whatever forces in the members you have got it by method of section, that means they are to be treated as a uh, known. If they are to be treated as a known, the result should be marked on the cusp. And you can use those results in method of joints. But still, we try to use those results uh, as far as possible. We try to avoid using the now you can see that I'm reading it. Results of method of section should be marked on the truss before uh, starting method of joints. If method of section, uh, in method of sections, we can, uh, here, we can use more moment equilibrium conditions if we have more convenient moment centers uh, on every. Now, initially we learned that equilibrium conditions for general force system are sigma fx, sigma fi, and sigma m. This is set one, which has no unknown. If you want to use uh, uh, more than one moment equilibrium condition, I mean two moment equilibrium condition, one force equilibrium condition, like in this problem, this FBD, we have used sigma MD and sigma MC and sigma FX. Yes. So, but here there is some uh, limitation. But that limitation of the equilibrium condition, all that is mentioned in uh, equilibrium chapter of my book. Now, we need to only remember that when we took sigma MD, these two unknowns will go off and third is off. When you took sigma MC, FCD and FC went off and you found F. So this way, if you are having more convenient movement centers, so then you can apply more movement equilibrium condition in uh, general force system and without worrying for the unknown, uh, limitation, without worrying for the uh, limitation. Now, this FBD is obtained by method of sections 1264.8 compression, we have marked it. FCD was obtained uh, 1000 Newton tension, we have marked it away, away, value is written. This is obtained as 600 Newton, we have marked. So, this forces in members BD, CD, and C have been marked. We will make use of these results, but to minimum extent. Now, forces in other members are required. So, you may start from joint A or you can start from joint F. Let's start from joint A. So, this is 1200 is reaction. FAC and FBD are unknowns. You can start with sigma FY is equal to 0. Sigma FY is equal to 0 is FAB sine 45 plus 1200 is 0. So, FAB is minus 1697. So, 1697 Newton compression. Sigma fx is equal to 0, FAC plus FABB cos 45 equals 0. Substitute the value of FAB minus 1697. FAC is obtained as 1200 Newton. So we mark this result. This is 1200 Newton tension. We have marked it on the member. This is 1697 compression, compression. Next, we come to joint C. At joint C, this is known 1200 force in member AC. 400 is external load. This is unknown FDC. Right? This 600 is known from method of section. This 1000 is known from method of section. So this FBD has only one unknown. That is FBC. So that will come by uh, using equilibrium condition sigma FY is equal to 0. Sigma FY is equal to 0. FBC plus 1000 sine theta is equal to 400. Right? You get FBC as minus 400. That means 400 Newton compression. So we have this mark this result on that as 400 Newton compression towards the towards the value is going to be then we come to this side, joint F. Joint F, this 1200 is reaction. FDF and FEF are the unknowns. 
you have taken them in tension away from joint, away from joint. This angle is theta. Starts with sigma f i is equal to zero. F d of sine theta plus twelve hundred is equal to zero. F d of is one minus one three four one point seven. That is completion. Sigma f x is equal to zero. F e f plus f d of cos theta is zero. F e f plus f d of cos theta is zero. F d of value substituted one three four one point seven, and cos theta value substituted. We get f e f as six hundred newton tension. We have marked it six hundred newton. Tension and this is mark one three four one one point seven completion. Last we take joint D because only one member uh, D E is left out. So I draw three point diagram joint E. F D is unknown. Two hundred newton is external force. Six hundred is external uh, tension. Six hundred is tension. So we write sigma sigma F I is equal to zero. F D is two hundred newton. That is what is tension. So this way, students, in this problem. We found first forces in few members by method of sections, and remaining by method of results. When they ask the question in this manner, that means results of method of section can be used uh, for method of sections. This type of problems are also asked in our examination many times. We'll see that next uh, few problems will also be quite identical. Problem number four. Find again the font size has been made small so that uh, full solution can be covered only on in one slide. All right. Solution of the problems of the trust is quite lengthy. Right. It normally in your examination it will run into three to four or five pages. Minimum three pages and maximum five pages. Here. The entire solution I have covered on one slide because I need to have the entire solution in one slide so that uh, my explanation will be proper and easy. Now we take question number four, problem number four. Find actual forces in members E F A D and A F by method of section and remaining by method of joints. Like identical uh, uh, question, forces in certain members by method of section, remaining by method of joints. So we draw F B D of the truss. On the F B D truss, what do you show? Truss as it is. And reactions exerted by the support. So hinge as will exert two reaction H and B. This roller will exert one reaction. That is B. All right. Now we apply the cooling condition. We apply just see that we are sigma F X equal to zero will give you H is zero. There is no other horizontal load on that truss. Sigma F Y is equal to zero gives you V A plus V B upward. Downward is fifty plus one fifty plus hundred. That is three hundred. Sigma M A is equal to zero. When you take sigma M A is equal to zero, fifty into two point five. This is actually five. And since this is a equilateral triangle, so if you drop a perpendicular from the apex, base is divided into two parts. So 50 into 2.5 clockwise, about 8. 100 into 5 clockwise, about 8. 150 into 7.5 clockwise, about 8. Then VB into 10, that is anti-clockwise. So you get the value of VB as 175 newton. When your VB is substituted in this equation, you get the value of VA as 125 newton. Now to find the force in member. Uh, Cf, uh, Ad, and Af. Pass the section like this. Mind it that this is not a joint. This is not a joint. This is not a joint, and this is not a joint. If it was a joint, then big dot will uh, be there. There is no big dot. That means uh, it is not a joint. Now we part. Uh, we pass the section one one. All three members are being covered on one section. We take every bit of the part of the truss on the left side of section. Now you can see that 15 newton is external load, 125 is external reaction. F A F, F A D, and F C F are the unknown members, right? These three members are cut by the section, so force in three members will become unknown. All three unknown members have been taken. Now first we write sigma M A is equal to zero. 125 F A F and F A D, all that will go. 15 into 2.5 clockwise. F C F. Sine 60 into 2.5 clockwise. F C F cos 60 into this perpendicular distance. This perpendicular distance is going to be it is going to be five sine 60. 4.33. How do we get this distance? 4.33 strands in this 
equilateral triangle. This is five meter. This is five meter. This is five meter. So this height is going to be five sine sixty. You can see that in this right angle triangle, this is five meter. This is sixty. So this is five sine sixty. Five sine sixty comes out to be four point three. That I have written it directly four point three. I hope you all can understand. So this way, FCF is obtained as minus twenty eight point eight seven or twenty eight point eight seven. You can compare. Then we write here, students. So once you have got the value of FCF, you can write sigma FY. Then you get FA. Sigma FY is equal to zero. One twenty five up. FAD sine thirty up is equal to fifty plus FCF sine sixty down. Right. Substitute the value of FCF. Minus twenty eight point eight seven. You get the value of F. This comes minus two hundred. That means two hundred newton. Then you can write sigma F X equal to zero. F A F plus F A D cos thirty plus F C F cos sixty equals zero. Substitute the value of F A D. Substitute the value of F C F. F A D is minus two hundred. F C F is minus twenty eight point eight seven. Then you get F A F is one eighty seven point six four. Results of method of section are to be shown on the F P D of the first. So this is twenty eight point eight seven newton compression. This is 200 newton compression. This is 187.64 newton tension. Now we can start with method of joints. To begin with, we can start from joint C. At joint C, there is only one unknown, that is F A C. Right? I cannot start from joint A because if I start from joint A, uh, you can because three unknowns are already obtained, two will be left out. So, but joint C working will be easier. That's why joint C has been considered. Joint C. If you consider joint C. This is 500 newton. This is not 500. By mistake, it has been written as 500. It is actually 50. What it is? 50, not 500. All right. This is a printing error. This is F A C, and this is F C F. F C F is already 28.87. So simply write sigma F X equal to zero. F A C cos 60 plus 28.87 cos 60. So you get F A C minus 28.87. That is 28.87 newton. Mark 28.87. Now we take joint E. At joint E, it is 150 newton. By mistake, it is written 500. It is 150 newton. All right, students. F B and F E F. This is 60 60 angle since this is a equilateral triangle. Now here sigma F X is equal to zero. F E F cos 60 is equal to F B cos 60. F E F and F B equal. Sigma F Y is equal to zero. F E F sin 60 plus F B sin 60 plus Plus one fifty. This will be plus one fifty. Solving one and two, you'll get F E F, and you'll get F B. Both are coming out to be equal. They come out to be equal. That is eighty six point six minus. That is eighty six point eight. Slight printing errors is there in this. This is not fifty. This is one fifty. So here we need to make correction that it is one fifty. Then we take joint B. We take joint B. At joint B, three members are meeting. Out of that, this is known 86.6 newton compression. This angle is uh, 16. 175 newton is uh, reaction. F B F is uh, unknown force. We took in tension. F B D is unknown force that we took it in tension. We write sigma F Y is equal to zero. 175 up. F B D sine 30 is up. Is equal to 86.6 sine 60 down. So we get F B D minus 200 or 200 newton compression. Sigma F X is equal to zero. F B F plus F B D cos 30 to the left is equal to 86.6 cos 60 to the right. F B F minus F B D is minus 200 cos 30 is equal to 86.6 cos 30. You got F B F as 216.5. So we should write the results of this joint on the cross. Joint B, F B D is 200 uh, compression. We have marked it. F B F 216.5. We have marked it. Tension, tension. The last we take joint D. At joint D, this is uh, unknown. This is known. Two uh, hundred is known for method of section compression. This is known two hundred newton compression. This angle is thirty. Since this angle is thirty, so this is a uh, alternate angle thirty. This is thirty to so this side is thirty. So these two angles are thirty thirty, and this is unknown member F D F. We took it in tension, right? Sigma F Y is equal to zero. F D F. Sigma F F D F down is equal to 200 sine 30 plus 200 sine 30. You get it 200. Results of method joints are marked on the class. Okay. So 
this problem also had the identical uh, wordings in the uh, first we found the reactions by considering fdd of the class then you asked to us to find the forces in certain members of method of sections and remaining by method of that's the one more problem on let's take up some Determine force in all the members of the plane truss shown in figure. Also verify the force in member B, D, C, D, and C by method of section. You are given with this truss. All right, this truss is supported uh, at hinge, uh, uh, supported by hinge at A and roller at. All right, hinge will exert two reaction, one horizontal, one vertical. All right, and roller will exert one reaction normal to the plane on which roller is resting. Roller is resting on horizontal plane. Reaction will be vertical. Now we consider FBD of this truss. You can see that here the diagram is drawn. So uh, 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 this external loads are given, and H A and V are marked at A, and B is marked at B uh, is marked at. It's written by mistake B B. It is V. It is V E. Now students, this member is making 30 degree. All the loads 2 kiloton, 4 kiloton, 2 kiloton are normal to the plane. So this member. Or this line is making 30 with horizontal forces or loads normal to the plane will make 30 degree with vertical, right? This is two kiloton, so this is 30 degree. So two cos 30, two sin 30. Here this angle will be 30, four cos 30, four sin 30. Similarly, two cos 30, two sin 30. All right. Now we write sigma f x equal to zero. When I write sigma f x equal to zero, h is to the right, one kiloton to the left, two kiloton to the left, one kiloton to the left. So h is obtained as four kiloton. Sigma F Y is equal to zero. V A up plus V E up down is one point seven three two three point four six four plus one point seven three. So V A plus V E comes out to be six point nine two. Then in triangle A B E, A B E, if you write cos thirty is based upon hypotenuse. Base is B and hypotenuse is A. V E comes out to be sixteen. V E is given as sixteen eight plus eight upon A. So A length comes out to be eighteen point four seven five. That we have marked it from the FBD of the truss. Now, students, when we take sigma ma on the FBD of the truss, when I take sigma ma, it is my choice, my decision whether I take the uh, movement of this load two kiloton, four kiloton, two kiloton as it is, or I take movement of the two components. All right. Now, when I take sigma ma, H A B A will go off. If I take movement of two kiloton as it is, I think you'll see that its line of action is passing through. So this becomes. Then, if I take four kiloton, you can take moment about the this four kiloton. If you extend and if you drop perpendicular, is eight meter. So four into eight. So I have taken moment of the loads as it is. So again, I repeat, sigma m h a v a will go up. Two kiloton is passing through a, its moment is zero. Four kiloton, if you extend and drop perpendicular, perpendicular distance is four into eight clockwise. Similarly, two kiloton load, if it is extended and if you drop perpendicular, it is at sixteen meter. So two into sixteen is equal to. V into eighteen point four seven five. That gets you the value of E as three point four six four. If this value is substituted in equation number number one, V A is also obtained three point four six four. So this way you are, you have found the reactions in that truss. So here little geometry was involved. Little trick part is there. See external loads if they are inclined, you should always resolve them on that truss. You can use resolved components for the working, or you can use the loads as it is also. Now we take joint A. Now we are moving to the method of joints. These arrows are shown. First, you this is diagram. Then this arrow is showing that you need to consider this next. Then next, you are considering method of joints. So you are considering joint A. Now to solve it by method of joints, we start from joint A because joint A will have two unknowns. Forces, uh, what is which two unknowns? AB and AC. Now we uh, draw figure diagram. Four kilonewton is external load. Three point four six four is kilonewton is external load. FAC and FAC. Sigma F Y is equal to zero. F A B sine sixty plus three point four six four. You get F A B as minus four. That is four point four kiloton. Sigma F X is equal to zero. F A B cos sixty plus F A C plus four is equal to zero. Substitute the value of F A B. That is minus four cos sixty plus F A C plus four. So F A C is minus minus two 
that is 2 kN compression. So we got this as 2 kN compression, we marked it on the truss, 2 kN near the middle we wrote, compression towards the joint, towards joint. This was obtained 4 kN towards the joint, towards joint. Next, we come to joint P. This is my joint P. This is 2 kN, this is 4 kN, we got it from FBD is at A. Unknowns are FBD at FBD. Student here, <clears throat> if you take reference axis X, as horizontal and reference axis y as vertical. Reference axis x as horizontal, reference y as vertical. It will be difficult to solve this joint, but it becomes very easy if you take x axis along this member. Can you see that x along this member and y normal? So working becomes quite easy. So when you are solving any problem of coplanar forces, whether in uh, equilibrium chapter or in this chapter, x and y are the mutually perpendicular reference axis. So x and y. It is not necessary that X has to be taken horizontally and Y has to be taken vertically. Only the required condition that X and Y have to be mutually perpendicular. So let's write here sigma Fy is equal to 0. Sigma Fy is equal to 0. FDC sine 30 plus 2 plus 4 is equal to 0. You get the value of FDC as 4 to uh, Then sigma Fx is equal to 0. FDD plus FDC cos 30 equals 0. Right? Sigma Fy is equal to 0. No, sorry, sigma Fx is equal to FBD plus FBC cos 30 is equal to 0. FBD, FBC is 4 cos 30 is equal to 0. FBD is equal to minus 3.464 or 3.464 kilometer. So mark the value of FBD and uh, FBC on the truss. FBD is marked as 3.464 kilometer compression. This is marked as 4 kilometer. Next joint, we take it joint D. This arrow you can understand that. Next, you have to consider. When you take FBD of joint D, this is 3.464 kN known. FD is unknown. FCD is unknown. We have taken FD and FCD in tension. 4 kN is expandable. Can I take X along this member and Y normal to it? As this 4 kN and FCD are perpendicular to it. Sigma FX is equal to 0. FD plus 3.464 equals 0. FD is minus 3.464 or 3.464 kN. Then sigma Fy is equal to 0, 4 plus Fcd is equal to 0, Fcd is minus 4, 4 kN compression. So we mark it, this is 4 kN compression and this is 3.464 kN compression. The last we take joint C. At joint C, this is known 2 kN. That is actual force in member AC. This 4 kN is known force in member BC. This 4 kN is also known to us by, right, on joint D, force in member DC. Then only one unknown is there, FC. Here we don't need to change any reference axis, simply apply sigma Fx is equal to 0. FC to the right plus 2 to the right is equal to 4 cos 60 plus 4 cos 60. That gets you the value FC as 2 kN tension. This way, students, method of joints in this truss is complete. One important thing what we have learned in this sum is that you can, while solving the problem by method of joints, you can change the reference axis. Only thing is required is what X and Y reference axis should be mutually perpendicular. Any external load given to you on the truss, is, if it is inclined, you need to resolve it. You need to resolve and then you can solve. While solving the sum, you can take the resolved components of the load into consideration or you can take the loads, uh, original loads into the consideration. Now, Next part in the sum is he is asking you to find the forces in member BD, CD, and C by method of section. This is BD, this is CD, and this is C. So you can find mark a section like this or not. We have marked it on this. No need to draw the truss again. Assume that your truss is with the loads and reactions only. I mean, you are marking the section on the FBD of the truss. So you can mark a diagonal section like this. All right. So that all three members will be covered on one section. And then FBD of the part of the truss can be considered on left side or right side. But here I feel the right hand side is simpler. So we'll take right hand side. We'll take right hand side. We'll show, uh, we'll draw FBD of the part of the truss on the right hand side of section 1 1 uh, for matter of sections. On FBD of the truss with external loads and reactions, 
pass section 1 1 as shown and consider f to be the part of the truss in the right side of the circle members cut this is member c fc fcb all three unknowns have been taken in tension 4 kN external load 2 kN external load 3.464 kN is the reaction now steps uh, you can start with sigma m is equal to 0 when you take sigma m is equal to 0 Sigma m is equal to 0 when you are taking it. Yeah, when I take sigma m is equal to 0, you can see that uh, yeah. Fc and Fbd will go off 4 into 8 anti clockwise, Fcd into 8 anti clockwise, you get Fcd as minus 4, that is 4 kN compression. Then in triangle CDE, then in triangle CDE, okay, in triangle CDE, you can use cos and uh, 10, cos 30 is base upon hypotenuse, that is 8 upon C, that gets you CE value, okay. Then uh, if you write uh, 1030, 1030 is what, CD upon 8, so CD is okay. Then you take movement about C, when you take movement about C, then 4 will go off, FCD will go off, right. You will be taking movement about what? You take movement about C. When you take movement about C, 4 will go off, FCD will go off. FBD into CD anti clockwise, 3.464 into C anti clockwise, 2 into 8 is clockwise. So you get the value of FBD minus 3.464, 3.464 kN compression. Then a little more geometry we will do it in triangle D, D dash E. I just did drop a perpendicular from D. Then in this triangle, what is D, D dash? Is 8 sin 30. D dash E is D dash is 8 cos 30. So we take movement about D. Then if we take movement about D, FBD, FCD and 4 will go off 2 into 4, 8 clockwise. 2 into 8 clockwise. All right. FC into DD dash clockwise. 3.464 into D dash is anti-clockwise. You get value of FC. So this way, all the three unknowns are obtained. All the three unknowns are obtained this way. Right. Here we have used three equilibrium conditions. Here we have used Three, equi three moment equilibrium condition. Why three moment equilibrium could be used in this problem? Because three convenient moment centers were there. See, this is E is convenient moment center or not? Because at point joint E, what goes off? When we talk about joint E, uh, we took a moment about E. So FBD and FC went off and we got FCD. We went we took moment about C, FBD and FC went uh, uh, FCD and FC went off, FBD was obtained. When you took moment about D, FBD and FCD went off and you could get FC. So this way, forces all the three unknowns could be obtained by three moment equilibrium conditions. So here there is a limitation which you don't need to remember it because you should con uh, consider the moment center only when after the three unknowns you are uh, converging at that point. Otherwise not. So limitation does not come in way in your way. But otherwise, when you are using three movement equilibrium conditions in general force system, limitation is that three movement centers should not lie on a straight line. And that's what is hap uh, not happening in this one. All right. So students, uh, we will have one more lecture on uh, this chapter. Okay. And uh, that will also be uh, uploaded soon. Uh, this is this chapter is not there for Mumbai University students. This chapter is there for autonomous colleges like BJTI or SPC or Thakur College, like that many more colleges are having uh, this chapter in the syllabus, right? That's why now I'm proceeding with the syllabus of autonomous colleges uh, of uh, Mumbai University, right? Mumbai University syllabus has been already covered. All videos have been already uploaded. My book is uh, the only book which contains the syllabus of Mumbai University as well as of autonomous colleges, right? There are many books in the market but probably they are not covering the syllabus of autonomous colleges. My book is covering the syllabus of autonomous colleges also. All right. The, uh, so uh, you can share this uh, uh, QR code of this uh, my uh, YouTube channel with your friends so that they are also benefit, benefited. For more problems, more solved problems are given in the book. Many uh, MCQs are also given in the book on every chapter. You can buy the book from Amazon. Uh, link of Amazon is given in the video, video description of this lecture. All right, uh, or the book can be 
purchase from the local bookstores also all right the most important thing is that continue to subscribe to my uh, uh, youtube channel so that you keep getting the updates as and when the new video is uploaded okay students thank you very much